Hi, thanks for coming to my channel. This is Midnight Moon Tarot and I'm Diana. This reading is for the astrological sign of Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter, or anywhere in your birth chart that Aries might appear. Also, if you're new to my channel, I'd like to take just a second and invite you to subscribe and click that little bell so that you're sure to be notified whenever I upload new content. Also, in the description box below, you'll find links to my social media, my Patreon, my PayPal, and links to some really cool things on Amazon I think you guys will like. Okay, so this reading is for mid-month June 2020. Keeping in mind that all tarot readings are timeless, so whether you come across this reading right after I upload, a week, month, or even a year from now, if you feel drawn to watch it, most likely you will find a message for you within the reading. Also keep in mind that if it doesn't completely resonate with you, uh, remember this is just a generalized reading for the entire sun sign of Aries. So if you know your other planetary placements, like I mentioned at the beginning of this intro, then you can listen to your other signs as well for additional messages. Okay, so let's go ahead and calibrate these cards to the astrological sign of Aries and ask our angels, guides, and ancestors for any love messages for Aries for the month, mid-month, June 2020. Spirit, what love messages do you have for Aries for mid-June 2020? Spirit, what love messages do you have for Aries mid-month, June 2020? One more time. Okay, now I'm going to divide these into three stacks. The card on the bottom of the deck is the Seven of Swords. Now, the Seven of Swords is the energy for the overall energy for this reading. So, as we go through this spread, I'm going to show you how the Seven of Swords is going to relate to the different cards that come up in your read. Now, the Seven of Swords talks about that. Uh, manipulating factor, uh, someone that may be uh, lying, cheating, manipulating. Uh, narcissistic behavior, somebody who takes a great deal of pleasure in uh, knowing that they are doing something and they are pretty much just getting away with it, okay? All right, so, all right, now for those of you who are new here, I do four rows. The first row pertains to you, what you may recently have been going through, uh, things you're currently dealing with, and uh, people, situations, options, different things like that that are coming towards you. The second column is the same thing, only it's for your uh, beloved, your intended, your twin flame, your soulmate, your karmic partner. This could be someone that you just met. It might be an ex that you really, really want to reconcile with. Uh, however, generally, it's the person you're thinking about the first thing when you wake up in the morning and the last person you're thinking about in the evenings when you go to sleep. The third column is about um, obstacles, challenges, blockages, that type of thing. And the last column is outcome. Now I've just laid out two cards in each row. Now that's eight cards. I'm going to do this two more times for a grand total of 24 cards. So generally, by the time we get to the end of the read, then we have a pretty good idea about what's going to be going on for mid-June. Okay. Now, for you, we have the Queen of Wands as well as that Hangman. And this is this Queen of Wands is you. This is your fire sign. This is your fire queen. And it's telling me that where you may be in a mood where you are very social and you are uh, wanting to get out there, of course, because of this pandemic and all of these uh, laws about social distancing, you're feeling as if you're stuck, as if you're not being able to move about uh, freely as your social butterfly. I feel kind of maybe you might identify with the uh, butterfly as your social, as your uh, spirit animal, so to speak, one of your spirit animals that you might find.
find yourself relating to that uh, and that you may have gone through a series of changes and now you are finally blossoming into the person that uh, you are growing into and uh, you feel as if you're stymied like you are being held back like uh, you're not able to move forward and the story about this uh, hanged man is you know he was hung up and strung by his foot like this and the more that he would struggle the tighter it became uh, the more he would relax the looser it became and the, the more at ease he was so even though this may be a completely uncomfortable position that you're in at the moment uh, don't struggle with it just Take it for what it is, uh, it's going to pass, and uh, you know, the more you struggle, the worse it's going to be for you. So just, you know, kind of be at ease with it. All right, now your partner has the Six of Swords as well as the Judgment card. So where they may have uh, made a decision that, uh, you know, they want a reconciliation with you. They may have been the person that just took off and left out of the blue, just took off no warning at all. Uh, maybe they ghosted you on social media, maybe they blocked you from their phone numbers or any way that they can block you. And it's like uh, they just have this, uh, may, almost just like an arrogant feeling that I'm getting from this. And then when they decide that they want this resurrection, well, they just expect that you're gonna be sitting there waiting on them, but that's not necessarily the case. So you may have a really big surprise in store for them when they come back around and you're gonna be kind of like, well, it's just a little too late, a day late and a dollar short or whatever those uh, things are. So when we come to our challenges and blockages and things that are keeping us from achieving exactly what it is we want to go, well, of course, we have this Eight of Swords, and it seems like almost everybody is ending up with this Eight of Swords lately, and we are, uh, we're feeling like, uh, you know, we're kind of afraid to move forward. We're kind of stuck in these patterns. It's our fears that are keeping us from moving forward, not anything else. It's just our fears and our thoughts that um, are making us feel as if we are uh, you know, not moving forward. Kind of like we're, we're stuck. We're just stuck. We're stuck in this place uh, because, you know, it can be so overwhelming, especially when somebody has uh, been a liar to you or betrayed your trust or anything like that, and they come back around. You're not necessarily ready to just jump right back in and have that reconciliation with that person. Uh, you're kind of uh, getting to like yourself in the in the things that you are accomplishing in your life, and you are actually looking forward to the future and kind of imagining uh, what your new life is going to be all about. Uh, you're not necessarily wanting to get stuck at all back there. So it seems as if you will very much have maybe two different uh, options or suitors coming into your life. Uh, you may be dealing with an Aries or you could be dealing with a water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. These are people who have your best interest at heart. These are people who are genuinely interested in you and all the things that your fiery personality has to offer. These are people who don't have to feel intimidated by your strength. Uh, you know, a lot of weaker people that uh, as stronger females tend to get involved with, they kind of feel intimidated and, and they will end up like uh, maybe putting you down or, uh, you know, pointing out faults or saying things to make you double think or question yourself about what it is you're doing. Uh, don't listen to those people. They have absolutely no place in your life. The type of people, whether they are just friends or they are new love interests that are coming into your life, these are the kind of people that you want and you need in your life at this time. Okay, so when we get to the second row, we have that nine of wands and the ten of wands. Your partner has the Ten of Pentacles as well as the Four of Wands. The <clears throat> obstacles and challenges are the Knight of Wands as well as the Lovers. And in your outcome, we have that Six of Wands and the Death card. So, you know, when we have the Knight of Wands, this tells us that, you know, you're kind of feeling guarded. You're in that position where you're feeling like you're waiting for that next shoe to drop. This, uh, this past person is trying to re-enter your life 
okay? Remember, they're the person that walked out on you and left you hanging, okay? Uh, no. We, we don't need that kind of thing back in our life. Uh, when you let that person back in your life, you're always going to be second guessing yourself. And it is time for you to lay this down, to, to put these uh, wands down. You can't carry them with them. Tends are about the end of the cycle when uh, you, you know, you've completed all of the lessons that you need to do, you've learned them, you know them, but you don't want to be carrying them around with you for the rest of your life and be in a position where you're always questioning and second guessing yourself. So this new person that's coming into your life, this, um, this uh, you, you know, <clears throat> This Aries or this water sign that may possibly be coming in. It could even be an earth sign, uh, Taurus, Capricorn, or Virgo coming in. This is somebody who like values you. I mean, really values you and finds a lot of joy and uh, in in a relationship with you, in a potential relationship with you. Any one of these people would be. Uh, I wouldn't say one is more. Uh, optimal over the other, so to speak. Any one of them has the potential to be a very good match for you, especially at this time, especially, you know, when you have had all this this past couple of months to work on yourself and that introspection and to carry on and figure out exactly what it is you do want from life. And uh, it's just time for you to sit back and wait for those ships to come in, wait for those new loves to come into your life. So when we get to your obstacles and challenges, well, we have the lover's card. Okay, so how is this possibly a uh, challenge or a blockage? Well, because when you have three potential partners or, th or more that are coming into your life who are recognizing you for your own authentic self, that you've grown into a person where you have your own um, ability to uh, go about life and make your own choices and uh, you know just become autonomous in all areas of your life uh, this is something that is very respected by these people they value that they these people are in no way intimidated by the strength that you have when I was <clears throat> first laying out the cards and shuffling the strength card fell out and you know this absolutely speaks about uh, what it is that you're feeling within yourself that you have done all this work on yourself and you have dug deep and you have found what you're made of okay all right and this is something that's admired by the others your only obstacle is going to be who to pick well you don't necessarily have to pick any of them you can just enjoy the company of them until you know them better and whichever one suits you your lifestyle and your personality better would be the one to go with now this person from your past is definitely trying to re-enter again as they see you moving on and uh, you know having this really um, beautiful experience for the summertime that's coming up and they want to be a part of it so badly but you know this is somebody that you know walked out on you left you hanging left you uh you know in a position where you everything that you believed was real and true about the relationship you found out that it was complete lies and and you were just being used uh they <laughs> almost for their own amusement that's kind of what I'm getting here this is what I'm feeling is is that you know they take a great deal of pleasure in needling you and triggering you and uh, just for their own benefits whatever it is that they felt that they needed to do in order to um, you know get that response from you uh, kind of like an energy vampire that they just feed off you while you're sitting there squirming trying to uh, you know get over this and, and move past it so for our last column we have that page of swords as well as the six of pentacles uh, your partner is the fool as well as that three of wands we were just talking about uh, your Obstacles, challenges, fears, anxieties are the Ace of Swords as well as the Knight of Pentacles. And in your outcome, we have that Nine of Swords as well as the Two of Swords. And so I'm probably going to draw maybe just one or two more clarifiers at the end of this reading since it's kind of like leaving us hanging there. 
So when we have this uh, page of sorts, this is somebody who's like keeping an eye on you. They're really watching what you're doing. This could be that person from your past that really wants that reconciliation. They've gone out into the world, they made their own way, uh, and they're not quite finding uh, the uh, supply, we'll use that word since most people are familiar with that and what it means these days. They're not uh, finding the supply that uh, you were providing for them. So they realize, oh, you know, I can really come back and, uh, you know, lie to this person and tell them, you know, all these things and they'll take me back and then I will be able to, you know, draw on that uh, because you have such a really, really strong life force that they are really drawn to it and feeding off of it. And it's leaves you, this relationship leaves you in a position where you feel as if you are the one that's constantly doing all the giving. Of course, you're giving all of your life force and all of your energy to this person and you're receiving nothing back in return. So, you know, that death card that we got in your outcome is, is the most, uh, again, optimal decision that you can make when it comes to this person, unless you just particularly like being sucked dry of all of your, uh, you know, you can be very, very attracted to this person. You can feel like you are uh, very drawn, very tied to this person. And at the same time, you're going to find that this is somebody that just completely depletes you. Now, when we get to your partner, and now we're talking about the new partner, we have this fool and this that new opportunity where, you know, you're waiting for your ships to come in. You know, we were just talking about that. And, uh, you know, you've done your work on yourself you're putting that energy out into the universe and now it's all coming back to you abundantly and it's leaving you uh, feeling very spirited very lighthearted, very optimistic about your future and where you are going and it's you know any one of these options that are coming into your life any one of them would be a good choice it's just like I was talking about earlier you just need to find the one that actually uh, suits your lifestyle and uh, your personality best. <clears throat> so this definitely tells me that, yeah, slow and steady wins the race. You just take your time. Uh, don't rush into anything. These lovers are there. These are not fly-by-night type people. Even if you choose not to become lovers with one or the other of these several that are coming towards you, uh, these are people who can actually be really good lifelong friends and a source of um, optimism and, um, you know, an uplifting friends, not the ones that are always constantly dragging you down. But yeah, just take your time when you are making that decision so that you do make the, wrong, the right decision because there's nothing worse than, you know, uh, getting in a relationship with someone before you're ready and finding out that you were better off as friends because then when you move on with your life or your partner moves on with your life, oftentimes it's a very uncomfortable position for the new partner, either your new partner or your um, uh, the other person's new partner, uh, to feel that, uh, you know, that it's awkward to sometimes uh, have your partner be friends with someone they were once intimate with, okay? Uh, all right, so in your outcome, we have this Nine of Swords and we have the Two of Swords. And this tells me that, you know, sometimes, yeah, you were hurt. You really did love and care for this person from your past. They really did do a number on you. And it left you many, many, many nights of feeling as if, you know, what could I have done differently? Uh, where did I go wrong? If I took this person back, blah, 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 all of that stuff that goes along with that. Uh, remember that sometimes in the middle of the night, especially when we're alone, uh, we tend, our mind tends to wander and we get this way. And we were talking about the, um, the strong spiritual ties that you sometimes feel to an ex. Sometimes these are like a karma. You might need to do a cord cutting because at nighttime when they're alone as well and they're thinking of you, their energy actually comes to you and intrudes on you and it could actually be a really good time to um, have this uh, 
be cord cutting to, to do that. So there's a lot of good videos on YouTube about cord cutting. Uh, if you guys want to look them up, if that needs to be your experience right now. But this Two of Swords, you know, this is talking about finding that truth. Just finding your peace within the ending of that relationship so that you are able to move on completely and not have any ties to this past relationship. So like I said, I'm just going to reach in and just randomly pull a card and I see that it's the Queen of Pentacles and this tells me that yes, you may very, very well find yourself drawn to your um, your Earth sign, your Taurus, your Virgo, your Capricorn person that's coming into your life. This is somebody that is going to offer you that focus and give you that, that grounding and that stability, not only emotionally and romantically, but financially as well. This is not somebody who's always going to be hitting up your purse strings trying to find out what's, you know, what they can get from you. And then we have, what is it? Okay. The Five of Pentacles. All right. And so, yeah, this person from your past definitely left you feeling abandoned. They pretty much just cut off all ties with you. Uh, you generally, it's because they have something else going on. They're sneaky and stuff. And when it doesn't work out, they always tend to come back. So keep that in mind when uh, your past partner decides to uh, rear their ugly head and uh, come back into your life and uh, disrupt everything good that you have going on right now. Okay, guys, so that is your reading for mid-June 2020, and I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I just want to take a second again, and thank you so much for all of your comments, likes, shares, and subscribes. And if you're new here and you haven't already, please subscribe and click that little bell. And then I guess I will see you guys back here in another week or so with the end of month uh, readings for June 2020. Okay, I love you guys. Bye-bye.